Hey you guys, it's your girl Antoinette and today we coming at you with the video and it's called It Begin Texas Send More Immigrants to NYC. How can they send them up there? Like they gonna just make things really bad for them in Texas so they can't stay? Well, New York can't handle no more of them. They can't. I mean, they, it's too overpopulated already in New York. Texas is bigger, so they might. I feel like they should stay in Texas if they just had to go somewhere because maybe they probably get like more stuff maybe in New York. So maybe that's the reason why they want to go. I don't know. But let's don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, turn notifications on so you can see me, and let's get into this video. And know this, I will continue to bust those migrants to sanctuary cities across the United States of America. But oh, they're going to New York, trust me. <laughs> So this could be a huge problem because as you can see from the lines behind Really? So he gonna try to just move them everywhere else But they gonna mo most exactly gonna go to New York Okay I mean, thousands are still arriving here in New York City every single week. Yet local residents are pressuring the city to shut down several shelters that they say are inhumane, which means if Texas makes good on this threat, the next folks to arrive will have nowhere to stay but on the street. From the outset, community groups did not like the idea of usurping eight acres of ball fields for a 3,000 bed migrant shelter. It has not gone away. We're still dealing with this every day. As the migrant crisis continues, New York City leaders will not stop evictions for adult migrants who've reached their 30 or 60 day shelter limit. A shelter system in New York City was created to stabilize people. This rule does exactly the opposite. The 30 and 60 day shelter eviction rules are some of the cruelest policy. People said it's inhumane to put people out during the winter time. So now they say it's inhumane to do it in the summertime. Since the spring of 2022, to more than 194,000 migrants have received care in New York. Now, after months of what one group calls violence, fights, and reports of illegal activity, the Randall's Island Park Alliance says it's time for the city to fold its tents, remove the cots, and hit the road. When you see some of the hypocrisy of people who are saying, bring us your tired, your weak, your huddle masses, yearning to be free, but not on my block. So the Texas governor has vowed to send more asylum seekers to New York while calling everyone here a bunch of hypocrites. But what nobody's talking about is that Mayor Adams recently said the exact same thing, also referring to New Yorkers as hypocrites for protesting some of his shelters, saying that the shelters contribute to violence, that they occupy public resources, and that they are bad for the neighborhood they're in. But at a recent press conference, the mayor just laughed it all off. And what else is he supposed to do? Just a couple of weeks ago when the city tried to repeal its right to shelter requirements or modify them so that they wouldn't have to provide an unlimited number of people with temporary shelter, activists got upset. There were rallies, there were protests, there were accusations that the mayor and his administration were cruel and heartless and had no humanity in their souls. Even though the city does- I feel like if they find out that the people in the shelter, the adults, if and the teenagers, if they doing stuff that they ain't got no business, they need to kick them out immediately. Even if they do got like the 30 or the 60, maybe they should just scratch it just a little bit more because it is hard to try to find jobs, but just stay on them. Like y'all need to go out there, try to hustle, try to find something. And... But if they find out they doing like if they have weapons on them, they doing things like they ain't got no business, illegal substances and stuff like that. Go, go. We can't help you. You need to be out there on the street like you a like you a puppy or something like that. Because no, we are here to try to help the people, and it's only getting harder for the people that actually do need it because of the other people. Like they just don't care. They making it hard for the other people, like they always say. One bad apple spoiled a whole bunch. And that's kind of what's going on. 
doesn't have the resources to house the entire world, which is impossible. Yet activists were insistent on the right to shelter applying to everyone, which forced the city to start kicking people out of its shelters after 30 days just so new asylum seekers could move in. Which is something else activists are upset about. They want the shelters to be permanent forever. But since no. that's not possible, uh -uh. the shelter system is now a revolving door operation, leading many people to question whether or not the asylum crisis is helping the very asylum seekers who are stuck in it. And that brings us to the real reason why we have an asylum crisis in this city to begin with, and it's because every single time city leaders try to care for the people everybody says we want to care for, they get blocked, stopped, fought against. Which is shocking because polling consistently shows that 80% of New Yorkers are in favor of right to shelter. But the Texas governor is going to put that to the test, which means we're going to find out pretty soon where the city stands on this. is about to come to an end in just six months. So this tells us everything we need to know about why the asylum crisis is the way it is. And it also reveals that this entire crisis isn't about the people that are coming to New York City. It's about politics. And if New York City is really a sanctuary for immigrants, why are the immigrants who are here being treated the way that they are, getting kicked out of their shelters? At the same time, we've got so much activism going on here right now that it is starting to conflict with itself. On the one hand, we don't have enough shelters. On the other hand, we need more shelters. There's also endless debate on how long people should be able to stay in them. Some some people yeah. want it to be forever. Other people think no. that the term limits we have are good because those limits help the city free up shelter space for new arrivals who come every single week. And now you've got a situation where the mayor's extremely frustrated. He's implementing the laws that were voted for and he's doing it with the limited amount of resources that the city has, yet he's getting all the blame for how these things work out. But the mayor's response to the Texas governor's threats is one many New Yorkers will probably appreciate. But before we look at how New York City is gonna respond to this latest round of threats, it's important to understand yes, that that's Texas what I governor say. says he's that's going to continue say. his bus program as long as the country's border remains in its current state. That being said, the mayor has a few tools at his disposal to fight back against another bus program, and the mayor's not taking the Texas governor's criticism of him or his city lying down. First, the mayor's office has called the governor of Texas a coward for offloading his problems to somebody else to deal with, and the mayor's office even went so far as to mention that crime in Texas under Greg Abbott has risen exponentially since he started. Believe who you want to on statistics like that. But the Adams administration said it's left to pick up the pieces of broken policies that use people as political pawns, while maintaining that the city's provided care for over 200,000 people since this crisis began in New York. But words aren't the only tool the mayor plans to use in the face of this. In January, Mayor Eric Adams announced that he is suing 17 bus companies for their role in busing tens of thousands of migrants from Texas to New York City since the spring of 2022. Today's lawsuit. So last year, when Texas started busing asylum seekers here to New York City, there was a massive surge in immigration numbers. But the city ended up suing the very bus companies on which those folks were traveling in order to get them to stop. And this has worked because one of the 16 companies involved in that operation says they're not going to do it anymore. And the companies that wish to continue transporting people here face a blockade of some sorts at the actual bus terminal. And they're limited to just dropping off guests at one specific location during specific times with 48 hours advance notice. And what used to effectively be a 24-hour, seven-day-a-week operation is now limited to just a few days a week and just a few hours. But here's where things get interesting. In New York, it is illegal to transport someone here so that they can take advantage of the city's generous right-to-shelter laws. That's why the city, city thinks they've got standing to sue. But activists are actually upset that the city shut down the busing program, which was costing the city money, caring for folks who may not have come here if they weren't given a free right. ticket. The city is seeking more than $700 million from these 17 bus companies to cover the cost of caring and sheltering these migrants. As part of the lawsuit, the city was also requiring these companies to post a monetary bond to start covering the cost. $700 million in damages related to care. That's crazy. But before we go over why activists are upset the mayor has been battling this program trying to shut it down when the program was still active 4,000 people a week were arriving in the city those numbers are down considerably to around 1,300 people a week but if Texas does start sending more people here that could change there are more ways to get into New York City than a bus that goes straight from Texas to here you could take a bus part of the way and then take another bus part of the way plus there's roads bridges trains planes and it may be impossible for the mayor to completely close off the city's border to just one person from one certain part of the world 
plus Golly, there are people who would know. say that that's illegal. But wait till you yeah. hear why activists are so upset with the mayor for shutting down the initial Texas bus program in the first place. Malou says he is against a lawsuit suing these bus companies and adds it has made their job more difficult when trying to find new arrivals. It's a little bit more difficult for us to, to get a grasp as to where they're going to exit. So we're still we're seeing... You know, that almost makes it seem like the number of people coming here remains unchanged because New York is such an attractive destination with so many things to help asylum yeah. seekers that people would make the journey here no matter what. And even though it might look like the mayor's plan to block buses coming in from Texas is a win from a political standpoint, in practice it means that people who are coming here just have a harder time doing something that they already had planned to do when they left wherever it is they're from. And whereas in the past you had people arriving at one specific part of this very specific location, now folks arrive everywhere. Penn Station, Grand Central, various terminals here, roads, planes, trains, and the limited resources that humanitarians have to help are now being spread even thinner. But now since the city's going to war with the companies bringing people here, there's no standard procedure for dropping people off, and humanitarians have no way of knowing where vulnerable folks are going to arrive. And they're now running around the city at all hours of the day trying to track down one person from here or one person arriving here. It's a big mess. And the most insane thing about this is no matter how people end up arriving, the city's never had any plans to disqualify someone for applying for shelter. So here we have the city on the one hand winning points politically, but also... Just tell me which I, which I want to be like the mayor of, you know, like New York. And how would y'all change that? Because they have a lot going on. And all those immigrants coming like every week and stuff. And then you got to try to find shelter for these people. Because you just don't want them just out there. Because I'm pretty sure New York stinks. I had a friend. He was a truck driver. And he said like California and New York and stuff like that. It stinks out there. Yeah, he was like, you don't even want to go there. I know a place stinking big old giant rats up in there. I know it stinks. So, what would y'all do to like hip it? hurting the people it's supposed to care for by making their lives tougher. And if Texas does decide to resume sending larger and larger amounts of people to the city, and if the city continues resisting those efforts by just making the journey tougher while still offering to help people, the city is just going to end up wasting the little resources that it says it has. And speaking of resources, the city's shelters are now so full you have lines of people waiting to see if the shelter system will reaccept them for a place to stay because they've started kicking people out. Can you believe that? Shelter evictions uh. in a sanctuary city? While at the same time, you've got activists insisting that the people who have been evicted should be allowed to stay forever and that we may no. have too many shelters in the first place, which makes this the most con... So behind me, this is the line to get into the re-ticketing facility. At this place, everyone who's been evicted from a shelter can get a plane ticket, bus ticket, or help with a ride-sharing app to the destination of their choosing. But the reason there's a line here is because shelter evictions have started, which has activists fuming, yet other activists are upset that we have as many shelters as we do for some reason. The city says they have to place these shelter limits because they don't have room for everyone. Just last week, the city received more than 1,300 new arrivals. Yes. Not going away. So everyone no, watching this knows not. the evictions are a bad idea because they lead to what you see back here. But New York City's laws stipulate that everyone gets a place to stay on a temporary basis, even if the shelter system is full. And when you offer a limited number of resources to an unlimited number of people, this is the predictable result. In fact, the shelter system is now tasked with doing something it was never designed to do. The way that the shelters should be operating is they should allow people to move in and not force them to move out until their time has come to its logical conclusion, meaning that they've gotten the help they need to enter society. Yet the shelter yeah. systems here have people evicted after 30 days when a work permit takes a minimum of six months. And obviously this is something that people should be and are upset about, but it's bringing up a question. Is this the city's only option? They've got a lot of resources, but are they doing what they have to do to abide by the law? Like or is it. this deliberately cruel? We're still dealing with this every day. As the migrant crisis continues, this is my thing, you guys. You know how, like, they do, like, with all, like, your councilmen's and stuff like that in each city? Like, cut some of that money back. Cut some. Start. I bet you they'll start making better decisions when they paycheck getting, uh, getting messed with and giving it to the people who really need it, which is the New Yorkers. And I mean, like, I'm not saying, like, let's just all go to New York because they helping people. They doing all this. 
let nah, I'm not saying that. Just I feel like they should just start cutting some of their money back because it's for to help, you know, like some of the in, immigrants who get in there the right way. Like I said, if they set up there acting like they ain't got no sense, then you kick them out. But I'm pretty sure them people making over like seventy thousand dollars, a hundred thousand dollars a year and stuff like that. Kick some of them. Nah. That's just too much. Even like I feel like that even with the president and all of Congress. Cut some of that money back. They already old as dirt. Kick them out. Put an age limit on it. Kick them out. I already see falling. Can't even stand up or give a speech. Up there. I ain't finna say no name. <laughs> New York City leaders will not stop evictions for adult migrants who've reached their 30 or 60 day shelter limit. Critics have called the policy. So here's the thing. The mayor's office spent six months with local activist groups in court going over how exactly to implement right to shelter when these conditions persist. And putting up a no vacancy sign on the city's shelters and turning people away wasn't an idea that was being considered. Yet had the city gone and done that, all of the folks that you see here would have had enough time in the shelter to get the requisite assistance. Yet sadly, many of the yeah. folks getting let go that are now here to plead their case for a shelter extension are in no better position than they were when they got here. And that's not what a homeless shelter is supposed to do. People are supposed to be better when they leave, not worse off. In huh. fact, part of the problem is that people that are in line, they filed their asylum paperwork, they've got and everything set up with a caseworker, but since federal work authorization can take six to eight months, they're now waiting for that to happen. They can't provide for themselves on their own. And the second problem we've got here is that since right to shelter applies to the entire world, a potentially unlimited number of people, critics say this means nothing can ever be done to address capacity issues at the city's limited shelter resources, which is why we've got revolving evictions, which help nobody. And what's upsetting is that after six months of negotiations, this is the compromise solution that we got. Right to shelter remains the law of the land, yet it only applies on a temporary basis, and this is the result. Yet now, many of the very same people who are in favor of the creation of this very same system are now activating against it, calling the mayor's actions cruel and inhumane, saying he's doing something wrong when this is what was agreed on and a judge is overseeing it. People said it's inhumane to put people out during the winter time, so now they say it's inhumane to do it in the summertime, it's inhumane to do it in the springtime, it's inhumane to do it in the fall time. It's always inhumane to have to not be able to house 198,000 people. Unfortunately, this is what we see every single time the city does anything. If they need to build a shelter somewhere, there are always protests. There is always local pushback. And then if people can't stay in the shelter, there's pushback. If new people come and they don't have a place to stay, there's pushback. And as you'll soon see, even with lines of people on the street, there are still some people advocating for certain shelters to go away entirely, which would just create more of this. Which is very interesting because recent polling shows that 80% of New Yorkers are in favor of right to shelter. Just not apparently when there is a shelter or or a facility in their particular neighborhood. That's always the wrong location for some reason. Which reveals a very dark secret underneath all of this supposed compassion that's supposed to be helping people and... Mayor Adams implied that the Randalls Island group was like all the other elected officials who want migrants taken care of, just not where they live. When you see some of the hypocrisy of people who are saying, bring us your tired, your weak, your huddle masses yearning to be free, but not on my block. <laughs> so Mayor Adams starting to sound a lot like the Texas governor in some ways, but it seems like he's just abiding by the laws of the land that New Yorkers voted for. And how else is the mayor supposed to house people who come here by the thousands every single month? As we're seeing, there's no great solution for how to do that. And if this is something many New Yorkers have a problem with, why aren't they voting for change? I will explain to you why that is. It's because activism for the sake of activism has taken over much of progressive America, including New York. And that's what you're witnessing here. And unfortunately for many people, including legitimate activists, activism itself is now a fashionable trend going on in America. Earlier this week, New York City Council member Shahana Hanif reintroduced a bill that would end shelter stay limits. All New Yorkers, no matter when they've arrived, deserve equity, not harm. 
a public hearing. So here we have people protesting shelter stay limits, which obviously are a bad idea because they put people back out on the streets before they're ready. But remember, these are the very same people who were rallying just a month or so ago in order to keep the city's right to shelter rules in place at all costs. And what the city's revolving door shelters have done is they've created a situation of bad outcomes no matter how you slice it, which means there's always something to fight against and get angry about. Yet the mayor and other city leaders are starting to figure out that the more they cave to various forms of activism, the more they create other opportunities for activists to get upset because there's no perfect solution to a humanitarian crisis bigger than what the city's able to deal with. And to help make sense of why this is the case, understand that when this crisis first started, unlimited shelter stays were how everything worked. And then what ended up happening is the shelters filled up. So what does the city do? They go out and they build new shelters to house more people. Yet yeah, those shelters help are everybody. cruel and inhumane. And although these shelters might not... I know everybody heard, like, you can't help everybody. We can only help some. We can't help everybody. So this is looking like kind of like where they're at in New York. We can't help everybody. We can help some of y'all, but we're not going to be able to help everybody because it's already a small, like, little island anyway. So y'all would have did better than staying in Texas. Y'all might have been hot and bit up by snakes, but... Y'all still hot and bit up by rats. So, I mean, because they ain't going to have nowhere for you to go. Texas, you might find two shade trees or something. It, it's, it's sad. And them folks, I really feel like if, it, if, it's, it, if it's that bad where you stay, then, yeah, you can come. But if, if you got to go through all of this, you might as well just stay where you at. I mean, that, that just mean. not be perfect the mayor even went out of his way to mention that he didn't want to use these humanitarian relief centers because they're not the same as an actual standing building but because right to shelter remains the law of the land the mayor had no choice but to build those facilities while being accused of having no soul by those who don't seem to understand that the city has limited resources top of that look every single time the city picks a location for a new shelter maybe like an abandoned school or something somewhere there are protests which means that the same activists who are protesting the tent shelters are also the reason tent shelters are all we can have. And what this means is that the city will perpetually be between a rock and a hard place every time it tries to obey the law. And observers are now suggesting that this type of mass protest against any and all government action, no matter what it is, is the reason this crisis looks the way that it does, and it's the reason that the people in it aren't being treated the way that they probably should be. But the real problem here is that people aren't just getting kicked out after 30 days and told to go fend for themselves. Since they can't do that, they are still 100% reliant upon the city and upon the state to care for them. And even though to some people it looks like the right decision may have been to temporarily suspend the right to shelter and do the right thing by every single person that was living in a shelter, there would have been protests if that happened because it would have stopped the flow of asylum seekers to the city. But now that asylum seekers can come as often as they want, the city is being protested because it just simply doesn't have the ability to help everyone the way that it knows it should. Which is why some people say we're now watching the idea of protesting and making a difference eclipse reality and consequence, meaning that all of this activism against the mayor's every single move might be making the problem much worse for the very people who are stuck in it and can't get out. Is that what's happening? Is New York turning into a city of activists who protest every single decision, no matter what it is, just because they aren't like the ones who made like it? Like Let it. me know what you think. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you. I feel like every city just about like if it's a big city or whatever, I feel like all of them starting to be like that. Activists are everywhere. They really are. They're everywhere and they ready to fuss and point their finger about everything instead of y'all helping out trying to make the situation better. Figure out what types of ways to do that. Give like y'all legislators an idea or something. So I know the majority of the time they're just gonna throw it away anyway, but still at least you can try to do something. But you don't have to make the problem worse and point your finger. Oh, you shouldn't have did that. And what about this? Okay, what you gonna do about that? Okay, get a people time. I mean, it is a bunch of immigrants coming. Why don't y'all let them come stay at y'all house for a little while? Make some tents out there at y'all house. It's enough activists. So some of them, since y'all, that's a one way y'all can help y'all city. Take some of them home with y'all. Set some tents up. Y'all tell me what y'all think about the video, and I will catch y'all in the next one.